Woohoo! Well, Ken Whiting here with Paddle TV on a hot summer day, and I'm here doing yet another gear review. And in this video, I'm reviewing a kayak that I've actually wanted to review for quite some time. And a lot of you have asked me to review. It's the Aquaglide Chelin 120 inflatable kayak. And when it, it's this hot and you've got an inflatable kayak, the smart thing to do is to let your vehicle do the pumping. Whew. The Aquaglide Chelin 120 has a retail price of 1,100 US dollars. It's 11 feet, three inches long. It's 32 and a half inches wide. It weighs 28 pounds or 13 kilograms. It has a capacity of 300 pounds or 136 kilograms. Its primary use is flat water touring. The Aquaglide Chelin 120 has three air compartments, two side compartments and a floor. The side compartments are made of Duratex and get pumped up to three PSI. The floor is drop stitch construction and can be pumped up to six PSI. It has four carry handles, two on each end and two on each side. It has an inflatable seat with a high backrest, an adjustable footrest, lots of loops throughout the kayak to tie things down, deck bungees on both the stern and bow, splash deflectors for both the stern and bow, a Scotty mount for accessories, a removable skeg or fin, and four sealable scuppers to drain water that gets in the kayak. Now I used to paddle pretty much exclusively high performance kayaks, whether they were high performance whitewater kayaks or high performance sea kayaks, touring kayaks. But over the past two years, I've been hopping into a lot of recreational and inflatable kayaks and have really developed an appreciation for them. This is a kayak that I look at and I'm intrigued. I'm, there's a lot of neat things that I see here. At the same time, I wonder how it's going to actually paddle. They call it a touring kayak designed for actual touring. Uh, and that will be neat to see how it performs. It's also for a bigger guy like myself. Its capacity is 300. I'm 195 to 200 pounds. I've got about a 34 inch inseam. I'm six foot two, I'm, I'm a tall guy. We'll see how I fit in this thing. But the only way to find out those things is to get it on the water. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Well, I've had like two hours of paddling this thing, which is indic well, really means two things. It means I've had a really good test of this kayak, but in order for me to paddle and test something for two hours, I guess it's kind of a spoiler alert. It means I'm enjoying the kayak and I am, but let's break it down uh, like I always do into the different attributes of the kayak, starting with its portability. Now it is an inflatable kayak. It's designed to be portable. So high marks right off the bat for being an inflatable kayak. It's portable, yay. But on top of that, this is a light inflatable kayak. It's 28 pounds. Now 28 pounds is not a lot for an inflatable kayaks. Inflatable kayaks are often 35 to 45 pounds, quite often more around the 40 to 40, three pound mark. This thing at 28 pounds is a treat. I think the reason it's 28 pounds is largely because there's no bladder inside this thing. This Duratex side uh, tubes here, they're just Duratex. That's the material that, that Aquaglide uses. There's no bladder on the inside. It's that simple. And the same with the drop stitch floor here. There's no bladder. So there's no extra weight. And 
Aside from that, I'm not sure exactly how they kept the weight down so low, but they did, and so high marks for portability. Actually, on top of that, this is worth mentioning too, the bag that this boat comes in has plenty of room. Now, I haven't tried to put the, the, the boat back into the bag, but every time I try an inflatable kayak, it seems like I know I have this grand puzzle at the end of the day to try to fit that thing back into the bag it came in. Oh, it looks so good when it comes in that package, but there's not a lot of extra room and it's hard to, to put it back into that bag with all the pieces. This one, lots of extra room. I have no fear that I'm gonna be able to get this boat back in that bag. So top marks for portability on this thing. Now let's get right to stability. This is a 32 and a half inch wide kayak. It should be stable. That's a pretty wide kayak. That's kind of what you expect for an inflatable with, with side tubes. And uh, it is, it's absolutely a very stable kayak. I mean, there's no sense of wobbliness or anything like that. Something that's worth noting is the seat is, it's an inflatable seat and I'll get to that in a bit, but it's very quite high. I'm sitting, fairly high. I actually took some air out of the seat to, to just play around with it a little bit. Um, so it's lower than it could be, but still high. I'm almost at the top of these tubes, I feel like. And so my center of gravity is quite high, but it's still very stable. That being said, uh, I also feel like if things got rough, because I'm sitting on top of this kayak and not like in it, I do feel like it's not that the kayak would flip, it's that I could get bumped out or literally fall out of this kayak if I was dealing with some, you know, rougher conditions. And so for that reason, you know, high marks for stability, but uh, really, you know, we'll talk about that a bit more. It's not designed for rough conditions. We're going to comfort. Comfort, okay. Like I said, I've been in this thing for a couple of hours and my butt still feeling good and I'm not feeling any desire to get out of this boat. That's not a common thing in a portable kayak because portable kayaks are notorious for sacrificing some comfort for the portable nature of the kayak uh, and the stability that comes with, with a wide boat. But this boat is very comfortable. The seat I really like. It's got that inflatable seat cushion on top of that. This high back seat is really nice too. It provides great support. It's complemented by the fact that I'm wearing a high back uh, PFD. And on that note, we're gonna take a quick break from talking about comfort to talk about two other things that I'm testing right now. What I am testing is the Astral EV8 PFD. This is my first time trying it. And the Werner Tybee fiberglass paddle. Both first time things for me to try. And let me just give you the quick rundown on, on both of these jack these items. The life jacket, I really like it. Comfortable from right from the get go. Um, you know, Astral, they do make some wonderful, uh, wonderful gear, overall gear. The, uh, what can I say? It's got a couple of pockets, uh, one on each side. They're mesh pockets. The front zip, it's contoured, uh, padding on the inside. What else we got? Oh, here's a neat little feature too. The, the, these shoulder straps, they're usually flapping around in the wind, but what they've done is they put Velcro on these suckers so you don't have all that strap flapping around. That's a nice little touch. I think the other thing that's really cool about this life jacket is it's a real paddler's life jacket. This is for recreational touring paddling. Recreational in particular because of the high back nature. It's not anywhere near the seat. And it's 135 US dollars. That's a great price point. A lot of paddling specific jackets are 200 to 250 dollars. Yes, they have more uh, bells and whistles, the more features, uh, maybe more even adjustment points so you can get even a better fit, but I really like this life jacket. As for the paddle, the Tybee fiberglass by uh, Werner. Now Werner, they make really solid paddles. They have been making solid paddles for a very long time. Now this is their sub $500, uh, spy, sorry, sub $200 paddle. It's got a carbon shaft and fiberglass reinforced nylon blades. It's a pretty standard uh, combination for not a high performing paddle, but definitely not a low performing paddle. A great next paddle from a beginner paddle. These blades 
are, because they're basically fiberglass reinforced plastic is what they are, nylon, they're durable. They take a beating. You know, they're not, you're not getting, they've got flex. You're not getting the utmost in performance out of these things. You're giving away some power, but, and they're a little heavy. I definitely noticed the swing weight on this paddle uh, is heavier than a lot of most paddles I use, pretty much all the paddles I normally use. So it is a heavier paddle. It's not like, it's definitely a sub $200 paddle compared to, uh, yes, I'm a bit of a paddle snob. I typically paddle with paddles that are $300 or $400, sometimes even more. <laughs> but uh, for the price range, this one retails for $155 US dollars. Definitely worth it. Carbon shaft as well, so you do get some good power and, and that reduces some of the weight. Their ferrule system, which is the connection in the middle, is bomber uh, and that you can have any feather you want. There's, there's no play at all. So, so back to the boat. On the note of comfort as well, uh, let's talk about sizing. I'm six foot two, 200 pounds-ish, 195 pounds, 34 inch, 34 inch um, inseam roughly. I still haven't actually done a, a, a real measurement, but I, I'm right in there. I've got long legs. I feel like I could be a little taller and still be good in this boat. My feet right now, they're at, at the end. They're starting to hit this little water deflector, but I could move the seat back a little bit. I wouldn't want to move it back too much because then I feel like this boat would get trimmed a little stern heavy and it wouldn't paddle very well. So I would say, you know, this is a comfortable boat for someone probably no more than 6'4". Any taller than that, you need to go for a bigger boat. Weight wise, it's a capacity of 300 pounds. It doesn't have big side tubes. And like I was talking about, you're sitting up high in this thing. So if you were a big person up top, you, that, uh, that your center of gravity is that much higher, you know, you might, I wouldn't say that someone who's 300 pounds would feel confident com and comfortable in this boat. I would give this up to maybe 200, realistically, 250. 30 pounds. After that, you probably want to look at a boat that has a higher capacity. Performance. They call this thing a touring kayak. It's not a touring kayak in the sense of a, of a hard shell touring kayak, a, a kayak that is designed to go on long paddles, hold a lot of gear. Um, but for an inflatable kayak, you know, I, I wasn't expecting it to paddle as well as it does. I get why they call it a touring kayak because you know, it's 11 feet, three inches long. It actually travels forward quite well, surprisingly well, considering the fact that it's got quite a flat hull like most inflatable kayaks do. And that's because it's hard for them to put that same V hull, that V bow that cuts through the water like most hard shell kayaks do. And th those V bows, what they do is they cut through the water and they help the boat track, go straight. With a flattish hull that this thing has and no V in the front, it's not piercing the water. And so it's very free to move around, a lot more like a stand-up paddle board. But that's where the skeg or the fin comes in. It stabilizes the stern. And so the bow is still free to move, but when I take a stroke, as soon as I stop taking that stroke, which is turning the bow, it just stops moving. It locks into place. And so it actually tracks pretty darn well for what it is. No, it's not the most efficient traveling kayak, but definitely not bad. I accept their naming of this a touring kayak. Now at the same time, maneuverability, high, high, high. You can spin this thing in a full 360 in two strokes without too much of an issue. So great combination of forward motion and maneuverability. Good performing boat. Now let's talk features. Okay, this thing's got not a ton of features, but it's got features. The, uh, the deck bungees on the bow and the stern, I like them. And there's nowhere else to store much gear in this kayak at all, but you can put some dry bags uh, on underneath these things. Not a lot of stuff. It'd be, you'd be hard, hard pressed to do an overnight trip in this thing, but you could. These water deflectors to stop waves and water from coming in the boat, you know what, I just went through some class one uh, white water here, a little bit of waves, really wasn't that much of an issue. Maybe it did help, maybe it didn't. But with that being said, one of the features I didn't get to test was the rear <laughs> um, wave deflector because the kayak was missing one 
uh, in the package. So I only got one of the, the inserts that goes in this boat. I am sure, I mean, I know obviously just a, a, an oversight when they were putting this thing together. And I'm sure with a quick phone call or email, they would be sending another one out. But you know what, I'm not rushing to do that because I don't sure these things do that much. Some other features I like in this kayak, there's so many loops uh, and tie down points. So for attaching gear and accessories, I mean, if you want to accessorize this boat and, or secure things to this kayak, that ain't a problem. The other thing I like is even they've got these little pockets in the front of the seat. Although this, the pockets, the side pockets that come with the kayak, I'm not particularly uh, enthused about those. I mean, I just don't think I would ever use those side pockets, but, but maybe some people would find that useful. This, now the scuppers, the scuppers, which are the holes in the kayak, they, they actually come with caps, so they don't need to be holes right through. But when you, this thing gets water, you open those scuppers and then the water can drain out. Scuppers really only work when the water in your kayak is higher than the water outside your kayak. But where I am in this boat, basically the floor of this kayak is in line or even a little lower than the outside water. So if I have these scuppers open, I'm actually getting pulling water in. The only way these scuppers are, are effective is if my boat is full, full, full. I've taken a big wave and it's up to the rim here and then the sky open those up and it's going to drain out, but it's only going to drain out to, you know, just a little bit above the, the floor of this thing. So it's not a complete draining of the kayak. Anyway, that's just something to, to know about them. They, they serve the purpose of draining a completely swamped kayak, but definitely when you're paddling this thing, you want them secured and closed. So now let's talk overall value of this thing. This is not a cheap kayak. It's 1100 US dollars. Uh, there are lots of inflatable kayaks for much less. I mean, you can on Amazon go and get an inflatable kayak for a hundred bucks and it will come with a paddle and a pump, but you get what you pay for. Is this thing worth $1,100? Well, my answer is yes, it is, because you're getting uh, a quality kayak, something that's gonna last a long time, something you can actually grow as a paddler in. This isn't an inflatable kayak that you get to test, test your, your, yourself with kayaking. See if kayaking is something you wanna do, and then you realize, yeah, it is, well, I'm gonna get rid of this thing and get a real kayak. No, that's not the case. This is a real kayak. You can push your kayak to some pretty good levels with this thing. You know, you're not gonna do any more than class one white water in this, but you can go on some long paddles, cover some distance in this thing uh, and have some fun. Compared to other kayaks in its class, it's also very comparable. There's a number of kayaks that are in the exact same price range or very similar. I mean, you've got everything from uh, NRS's Raven and Raven Pro, which are 1,000 and 1,100. Uh, the 1100 version of the Raven Pro has uh, thigh hooks, which this doesn't have. It's designed for white water and some solid footrests. But the flip side is it's not a touring kayak, anything like this. It, that thing is designed for white water, whereas this thing is, is definitely designed for more touring. Uh, sea Eagles 380X, it's similar style boat, much bigger, wider doesn't paddle as efficiently as this, even though it's a bit longer. It's just got, it's a wider boat, boxier, and it's pushing more water. Uh, so, but it, the, that boat is around eight, it's $900. And those boats, something to, that's worth noting, they do come with uh, pumps and the Seagull comes with a paddle as well. Whereas the Aquaglide, doesn't come with a pump. That's, that's an important thing to know because you will need a pump. Um, uh, definitely, it doesn't come with a paddle. It does come with a repair kit and the, the backpack, which is, the backpack is a, definitely a nice upgrade over the others. The other thing that's nice about this kayak over those other kayaks I mentioned, just using those as, as a comparison, is 28 pounds. You know, 28 pounds, that's, that is a light boat and that is worth paying a premium for. Is this thing going to last? Uh, how long is it gonna last? Well, you know, time will tell, but I like the build quality of this thing. I have confidence in it. And I think it's gonna do very well over a long period of time. So I think it's definitely 
solid value, but you need to know that $1,100, you still need to get yourself a paddle, PFD, and a, some type of pump. You know, they've got a $50 hand pump and they got a $130 electric pump, which is the one that I use because, you know, if you pump a lot of inflatable kayaks or you're gonna do a lot of pumping, you're gonna do a lot of paddling, they pay for themselves very quickly. So who's it for? Well, this is a flat water kayak. You know, it's for people who wanna to stick to, to flat water, to relatively calm, sheltered uh, waters. It can handle some chop. Definitely, it can definitely handle class one white water. Uh, it's not for really big paddlers. Like I said before, I probably, I would max out weight wise at around 230 pounds before I think people would start to feel a little uneasy in it. And six foot four is maximum height in this thing. It's for people that want a kayak that they could actually cover some distance in. It's not a kayak that's designed really to be, you could stand in it, but it's not designed for to be stood in. And it's designed for some someone who wants to, who's willing to pay a little bit of a premium for a higher performance inflatable kayak and for a lighter weight inflatable kayak. Well, there you go. My thoughts on the Aquaglide Chelan 120 inflatable kayak. Like I said, right from the outset, I'm a fan. I think it's, this is a nice kayak. I'm actually more of a fan than I expected to be. Is it a perfect kayak? No, but it's a solid kayak. I hope you guys have enjoyed this gear review. And if you have, you know what to do. Subscribe to Paddle TV, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. I love hearing from people who have had real experiences. I don't just love hearing from them. I think it's really, really valuable for all the people who are watching this video, trying to decide whether this is the right boat for them, to hear people's actual real world experiences with this kayak over a period of time. There's only so much I can know and learn from a two hour paddle in this kayak. People who've had this for a year or two years or more, a season, please leave a comment. Let us know your experience in this, this, in this thing. If you have any questions, of course, leave those down below too. And I'll see you again soon for another paddling tip, gear review, or paddling adventure.